Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's news conference. Chief James Raymer will begin, followed by Staff Superintendent Lauren Pogue, and then Mayor John Tory will also provide remarks. They will provide an update on the service's operational plans for this weekend. We will then follow with questions. Okay. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. I will, I will provide an update on the police planning for the weekend and will then invite Staff Superintendent Lauren Pogue to say a few words. Mayor Toya, Tory has joined us today in headquarters and will also provide some remarks. As you are aware, the Toronto Police Service, along with our city and emergency response partners and the TTC, is preparing for a convoy for freedom protests in locations around the greater Toronto area, including our downtown core tomorrow, Saturday, February 5th. Our objective, objectives will be to ensure the public safety and to limit disruption to the city and its residents as much as possible. We have plans in place and we continue to communicate with a varied group of organizers of these protests. The service is required to facilitate peaceful demonstrations. This will be balanced by our priority to ensure public safety, to protect hospitals and infrastructure, and the city's emergency response needs. The public should expect a large police presence in and around the downtown core and other areas around the city at different times over the weekend. The service will manage these protests as best we can with the intention to limit disruption, but our number one priority will be the safety of the public. These events are always fluid and dynamic and we will do, be doing our best to respond quickly and to communicate any important information to the public on a timely basis. We have done our best to plan for this based on all the information we have. Our approach will necessarily evolve based on what we see in real time. As always, we ask for the city's patience and support as we do our work to serve and protect. The service will be prioritizing emergency access routes to hospitals to ensure patients, their families and healthcare workers are able to access the hospital safely. Road closures have already begun and will be in effect to eliminate potential disruption to patients and healthcare workers who need access to hospitals. Anyone who attempts to disrupt hospital access and routes of emergency operations, including ambulance, fire or police, will be subject to strict enforcement. As we work to protect the public, we again ask for your cooperation and your patience as you may experience traffic delays in the downtown area and possibly extending into other areas. We recommend that the public avoid all demonstration areas if possible and to consider using public transit if they must be in those areas. The service will pro provide regular updates to the public through the weekend and this will be provided by Staff Superintendent Lauren Pogue. I'd like to invite uh, Lauren to say a few words now. Thank you, Chief Raymer. As the Chief has mentioned, our members have been working tirelessly over the last several days to develop a plan that prioritizes public safety and as limited disruption to the city as possible. Here is what we have done so far. We have deployed a greater number of uniformed police officers to the downtown area. We have put road closures in place for the areas of University Avenue and College Street. We have implemented parking restrictions to the area surrounding University Avenue. We have installed additional CCTV cameras that will be used to monitor police operations and assist with any potential investigations. And officers assigned to respond to protect activity have been directed to have their body-worn cameras turned on for the duration of the event. We have worked with our public and private sector partners, such as the City of Toronto, Emergency Response and TTC to use all of the resources that may be available to us. I will reiterate what the Chief said. We will be prioritizing emergency access routes to hospitals and anyone who attempts to disrupt hospital access and routes of emergency operations, including ambulance, fire or police, will be subject to enforcement. We are prepared to monitor events across the city 24-7 and deploy additional resources if necessary. We will provide timely updates through the media and social media so the public can be as informed as possible. I will be making myself available as needed throughout the weekend for updates as well. 
I'd like to close by thanking all members of the Toronto Police Service, especially the downtown divisions and our emergency management and public order unit who have taken the lead on the planning for this weekend. We know the increased presence of uniformed police officers can be unsettling, but we want to reassure the public that we, we are doing everything we can to keep our city safe and secure. Thank you. And now Mayor Tory. Well, good afternoon, and I want to say thank you to Chief Raymer and Staff Superintendent Pogue for this update. I think it is important that the public has as much information as police can provide ahead of this possible protest and throughout the weekend, and I'm very grateful for the efforts being made to keep everyone informed. I'm here at headquarters today, police headquarters, to show my support as mayor for the, week that the work that the police are doing uh, to keep people safe this weekend and to prepare for this weekend. Our city is no stranger to protests, often significant, large protests. Throughout this pandemic, we have seen protests happen on a number of different occasions and on a number of different issues, including regular weekly protests where many gather to object to public health measures and to vaccinations. I don't personally agree with all of the views uh, expressed by all of those protesters, but I respect the right of all Canadians to peaceful protest. So we've seen many peaceful and respectful protests in our city, and it is my hope if people are determined to gather to protest this weekend in our city of Toronto, that a commitment to respectful, peaceful protest will be demonstrated again this weekend. Police, with the full assistance of the city, have been preparing for this protest, as you've heard this afternoon, because we all want to do everything we can to avoid the situation that we're seeing in Ottawa. If anyone is planning to come here for a protest that is not peaceful and that is not respectful, I would urge you on behalf of all Toronto residents and businesses to please stay home. Peaceful and respectful is the way we do things here. Overnight and this morning, I've had calls from Prime Minister Trudeau, Public Safety Minister Mendicino, and Premier Ford. In our conversations, all three offered their help uh, and the help of their governments uh, to the City of Toronto, if required, throughout this protest. I'm thankful for their offers of support and for their commitment to helping us to protect the public safety of all of our residents and businesses. I know the road closures put in place over the course of the weekend may be disruptive to some residents and businesses. But as the police have said, the chief has said, this is about public safety in general and protecting our hospitals and everyone who works there and seeks care there. All of these measures are focused on public safety. I want again to be absolutely clear that I support Toronto Police taking necessary action to prepare for this protest with a focus on doing everything they can to protect the safety of Toronto residents and businesses and to minimize any disruptions to Toronto residents and businesses to the greatest extent possible. Les personnes doivent pouvoir obtenir ou offrir des soins de santé en toute sécurité. Les résidents et les entreprises de Toronto doivent être protégés et ce que nous essaierons tout de faire. The residents of Toronto understand that people should not be blocked from receiving emergency care or any medical care and hospital workers should be able to freely and safely come and go from their workplaces. I know Toronto residents are also thinking about all the businesses that will be open this weekend for the first time since public health measures were updated, the first weekend since they were updated, particularly restaurants that will be open for indoor dining. These businesses, which have been hit very hard by the pandemic, have every right to be open and not to be disrupted. As mayor, I don't direct the police. No elected official does or should. But I have made it clear to Chief Raymer that I will support his men and women doing everything they can reasonably do to avoid the type of situation currently being faced by Ottawa residents and businesses. No matter what comes, I know we will get through this weekend. And I want to thank Toronto residents and businesses in advance for their patience and understanding with these developments and for their cooperation with the Toronto Police Service and other public officials. Everyone's been through a lot over the course of this pandemic, but I know people understand the paramount importance of public safety. I also want to thank all of the police officers led by our very capable and reliable Chief of Police, James Raymer, and the city staff who are working throughout this weekend to keep our city and all of its residents safe. We want to keep them safe as well, the officers who are doing this work for us. This is a great city, and like all cities around the world, we've battled the COVID-19 pandemic for the last two years, and I know that's been tremendously hard on a lot of people, maybe most people. But we're almost through this pandemic, and we're at this point thanks to the collective efforts and cooperation of the vast majority of Toronto residents. More than 90% 
of Toronto residents have their first dose of vaccine. Today, 60% of eligible residents have their third dose. What great demonstrations of the unity of the people of this city, of teamwork, of concern for each other. And we're on the path to reopening. So we will get there and we will come back stronger than ever. I'm completely confident that will be the case and I'm here to provide whatever support that I can uh, to all of the men and women who will be working hard to keep this city, its people and its businesses safe uh, over the course of this weekend. Thank you. We'll now take questions. When you're called Palm, please unmute your mic at this time only. Please can you also indicate who your question is for? Chief James Raymer, Mayor John Tory, Staff Superintendent Lauren Pogue. You can ask one question and one follow-up. Once you've asked your question, you'll be muted again. Thank you. Nicole from the Canadian Press, do you have a question? I do. Um, thank you. And my question is for Chief Raymer. Um, I'm wondering, you know, as Mayor Tory said, there have been protests throughout the, the pandemic against COVID measures. Um, what specifically makes it so that this time, you know, you're coming out with, with this enhanced plan? Like, what is it that sets this apart? Well, that's, it's, uh, that's a good question. The, um, when, when you look at uh, recent events and the type of de demonstrations that are going around the country and, and then based on the intelligence information we're receiving from our partners across the province, uh, we're trying to ensure that we have an, a, a, a events and demonstrations going on in the city that will, uh, and we will make every attempt to facilitate peaceful assembly. But at the same time, we want to make sure that we protect the public, we protect our emergency services, we protect our hospitals. And given some of the information uh, that we've received, we feel that these steps are appropriate. Do you have a follow-up, Nicole? Nicole, do you have a follow-up? We'll come back to you, Nicole. Next up is Mark from 680 News. Do you have a question? Mark, I think you're having some sound difficulties at your side. Okay, we'll go to uh, Jackie next at CP24. Jackie, do you have a question? Jackie, you can go ahead. If you're having technical issues or you can't hear us, please submit your questions over the chat and we'll read them out for you. Yosa from the New York Times, if you can unmute yourself and you may ask a question. Fiosa, you can un unmute yourself. We'll come back to you. We have a question from Wendy Gillis at the Star. To what extent has the protest in Ottawa helped Toronto prepare for this weekend? Has the service studied what went well and what hasn't worked? And that's for you, Chief James Romer. Yes, um, actually, uh, we, we always 
examine and debrief events going around in our own jurisdictions and around the country with our policing partners and our subject matter, matter uh, experts. And so when we, we look to prepare the next event uh, that we have to address, we take all the, the learnings from each of those events, past events, and, and, and try to ensure that we can do things better, more safely, and uh, with uh, the public's protection in mind. So yes, we do learn from each and every event uh, that uh, we use those to prepare for. Thank you. And do you have a follow-up, Wendy? We have a question from Mark Douglas at uh, City News. Question for Chief Bramer. Are full-size buses on University Avenue meant to prevent 18-wheelers from breaking through? Yeah, those are, uh, the vehicles we use are event, uh, special event buses. Uh, we've used those for a number of years and uh, Quite frankly, they're larger, they take up more space, they require less vehicles. They just uh, prove to be a better uh, way to uh, block streets and, and different outcomes. And, and it's something we've been utilizing for the last, oh, I, I think probably the last six, seven years we've used those buses. Thank you. We have a question from Vioza, the New York Times. This question's for Staff Superintendent Lauren Pogue. Can please provide any additional details as to the number of officers, uniformed or otherwise, types of units, cruisers, et cetera, on the streets? And then she does have a follow-up question, which I'll ask to Mayor John Tory after. Thank you. Uh, while we uh, have um, uh, addressed that we do have many resources uh, who are available for the protest this weekend, I won't be commenting on the specific units or the number of officers or the areas that uh, they generally police at this time. Thank you. And her follow-up to Mayor John Tory, can you tell us whether the city will deploy any bylaw enforcement for infractions such as noise bylaws and how that effort will be staffed? Well, our uh, staff of people who uh, enforce uh, the bylaws and who educate people with respect to the bylaws are on duty all the time, as they will be on duty this weekend. And again, this is a coordinated operation as between the city uh, and the police service, and a lot of those decisions made about, uh, about law enforcement uh, are, are made in conjunction with one another, but certainly those directions are not given from politicians to the law, by law enforcement officers either. So I'm sure that they'll be out doing their job as they always are, and if they're required to be doing any specific aspect of their job related to uh, these events that we're planning for, they'll get that direction, I'm sure, from the police service and from uh, their own superiors within the city administration. Thank you. And we have a follow-up question from Nicole at the Canadian Press. She asked, what measures will the police service use if the situation starts to devolve? And that's to Chief James Raymer. Well, that, that uh, really speaks to planning and, and, uh, and a very robust planning that we do have in place to, to address uh, a number of potential exigencies. It's very much a fluid and very dynamic situation. And uh, I, what I will say to you is that it requires us to be nimble and agile and have to adapt. And so uh, at, at the end of the day, I can't speak to specific strategies, uh, nor will I, frankly. It's just simply to know that uh, we are examining a number of contingencies and, and uh, we will adapt to address uh, what we're presented with. And, and uh, we will try our very best to uh, address public safety and, and, and reduce or have minimal disruption to the entire city. Thank you. And Wendy Gillis has her final follower. What will the service do if there are protesters who come and park their vehicles and refuse to leave, as we've seen in Ottawa? And that also is for Chief James Raymer. We're, we're actually uh, have some strategies in place where we're going to, we are going to encourage, strongly encourage uh, areas where uh, people can stage vehicles where they will cause minimal disruption. And if, they're in, if their intention is to demonstrate, then they can travel by foot or public transit to Queen's Park and they can demonstrate uh, in person but uh, vehicles will not be congregating around Queen's Park. And we're going to, like I say, try to afford places where people can stage their vehicles where there'll be minimal disruption. Thank you.
I believe Mark Douglas has uh, reconnected. So, Mark, if you're there, do you want to ask your follow-up question? Johnny, thank you. Uh, I just want to confirm, first of all, everyone can, uh, can hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you, Connie. Thank you. Uh, glad to have everyone uh, back online here in the WebEx meeting. Uh, question for uh, Police Chief Raymer. Uh, I'm looking right now at the, block, at the barricades at college and university. Full-size buses are being set up here in the north and south ends of the, of the legislature building. Are, have such large vehicles been brought in for the barricade uh, out of fear of an 18-wheeler truck possibly ramming through a smaller barricade and charging the building? No, I, I, uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, we went to this type of uh, planning several years ago where we were using the buses. Uh, they were, as you can tell, they're painted the service colors uh, and they have special events planning and we use them to block roadways on a regular basis and it's, it's quite frankly, rather than two police cars, uh, we can use a bus and so that's why they're there to obstruct, uh, or not to obstruct, but to impede and block traffic for safety purposes. Thank you, uh, Chief. And the follow-up question to you as well, uh, Chief Bramer. There have been a few, a few posts on social media, but I'm thinking of one particularly by MPP Randy Hillier showing gas cans and explosive shells in reference to the convoy tomorrow. Are these posts being considered as any type of terrorism type threat? Um, what I will say, and, and, and it's a good question, thank you. Uh, what I will say is that we are engaged with all our partners across the province, examining social media, all in, uh, intelligence that is available. And based on the information we have, we will respond uh, and to ensure public safety. Thank you. And we'll go to our last reporter now, uh, Jackie, Jackie Crandall's from CP24. Do you want to ask your question? Hi, thanks, and apologies if any of these questions are redundant and I haven't been able to, to listen in much. Um, I have a question about how long you'll let the, um, the protesters stay. We've seen obviously in Ottawa that they're sticking around. Um, you know, the, the issue of vehicles aside, if they're able to get in on foot and, uh, you know, large numbers of them can do that, how do you control that type of crowd and how long do you let them stay if their intention is to stay? Okay, thanks, uh, Jackie, for that. Uh, I, uh, we'll, we'll assess the event as it goes. I mean, if people are on foot and, and they're demonstrating around Queen's Park, they, usually these will go on for uh, a number of hours, and, and then uh, uh, we'll be looking to uh, see the people move on. And, and uh, we'll work with the crowds and the organizers and try to facilitate a peaceful protest. But our intention is that uh, uh, these areas will not be used for people to encamp or uh, stay permanently for any duration of time. And do you have a follow-up, Jackie? I do, yeah. The, the residential areas surrounding Queen's Park and, you know, just in the downtown core in general. Um, in terms of, of noise and disruption to those areas, um, how are you going to keep people from entering those residential areas. Again, we've seen that happen in Ottawa. We've seen the disruption to the people who live um, uh, near the area where they're sort of t taking up space in Ottawa. If that's um, what we see happen in Toronto, how are you going to minimize disruption to people who call the downtown core and the surrounding area around Queen's Park home? Uh we are uh, very aware of, of some of the uh, activities that have taken place uh, in, in Ottawa, as you've referenced, and, and uh, very, we've very much taken uh, those things into consideration and are forming part of our strategy. Um, and so what I will say is that we are going to try to do our best to, to prevent that type of action and, and to ensure there's minimal disruption. That is our goal. Thank you. And before the conclusion, we just have one final question from Wendy Gillis at the Star. She's wondering where the staging grounds the chief mentioned are located and are they in the city? Uh, there are going to be a few places around the city, uh, Wendy. Um, I can't speak to where they are specifically now, but our teams are um, uh, in conversation with organizers and discussing those particular locations. Thank you, and that concludes today's conference. Thank you for joining us.